Evidence that our universe might exist inside a black hole? What's up with that? Given the mass of the universe, how big would the black hole be that contained this much mass? It's the size of our universe to our horizon. And it's like, wait a minute, could we be one giant black hole? The average density of matter contained within the size of our cosmic horizon matches right on with what you'd get for a black hole this size. That's intriguing. Maybe it's just a coincidence. What would it mean anyway for us to be inside a black hole? How, how would that work? Well, it turns out if you run the mathematics of Einstein's general theory of relativity into a black hole, it turns out a whole news time opens up on the other side. And you look behind you and the entire future history of the universe unfolds relative to your time frame. And so the universe you came from basically ends and a whole new universe opens up in front of you. Are we that universe that opened up in front of us? Okay, these are mind-bending questions. Do aliens exist? Don't know. We're looking for them. What I'm pretty sure is that they have yet to visit Earth. Because if they did, it would be odd that they only visit U.S. government facilities. Okay, so maybe they do exist and they have visited, but they are inherently fuzzy and they target restricted naval airspace, but only of the U.S. government. Are UFOs real? If you see something in the sky and you don't know what it is, it's real. It's a real UFO. So that question, are they real, almost doesn't make sense. Of course it's real. You don't know what you're looking at. It's a UFO. You want to know if UFOs are aliens, that's different. And I see no convincing evidence that we have ever been visited. And why there's so many sightings? Because most people don't know what goes on above their heads. I'm waiting for the high resolution image of aliens walking off a flying saucer. Then we can talk. Until then, showing me fuzzy images of lights in the sky during twilight or any other time of day. I, I need better evidence than that. I'm sorry. Could a comet or asteroid destroy Earth? A comet or asteroid will take out life on Earth, but Earth itself will be just fine. So when people say, especially people in the green movement, we need to save Earth, save planet Earth, you have no idea how resilient planet Earth is. It got slammed by a Mars-sized protoplanet, made the moon, and Earth is still here. What you really mean is, will, can it destroy life on Earth? It's done it before, it'll do it again. Unless we figure out a way to deflect the asteroids. I don't want to be the laughing stock of the galaxy. To be the only species that went extinct from an asteroid, yet we also had a space program. That's just embarrassing. Like, no. When will the universe end? Not in fire, but in ice. And not with a bang, but with a whimper. We are on a one-way expansion trip, never to cease, never to slow. And if dark energy has its way with us, in 10 to the 22 years, the expansion of the universe would have accelerated so rapidly that it would have ripped the very fabric of space and time itself. And we call that the big rip. I don't even want to know what that looks like. This thing came from deep space, not in our system, not from your Oort cloud or your Kuiper First belt. First time ever, an object from interstellar space has been observed to visit our solar system. Asteroids, we know, yeah. uh, many of them, if not most of them, are loosely held together rubble piles. Uh -huh. And if they come near uh, gravitational sources, tidal forces can stretch them so that they become a stream oh, yeah, of particles sure. rather than just one solid mass. So and this so thing this is, isn't solid? This, it is likely not solid. What is it? But but the, the signal we get from it is elongated, but it's probably a rubble pile stretched into that shape. Because mm -hmm. you don't get that by, by nature. You don't get that. This thing came in moving fast. Yeah. It has escape velocity, a hyperbolic orbit. The reason why it's probably not aliens is its trajectory around the sun 
was completely determined by gravitational forces. If this were aliens yeah. in a, some kind of advanced ship, it would be maneuvering, doing interesting things. But maybe it already maneuvered on its way in. It was doing a close pass around the sun to get a whip and acceleration, the be, way they use satellites to go around the back of a planet to whip yeah. them out into outer space. Yeah, you be, know how we use we, yeah, It's, it's called slingshot here. effect. Yeah, oh, yeah. You don't have to tell me. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> so, so, okay, maybe the aliens shut off their engines to masquerade as a cosmic object to get a slingshot effect around our star. Maybe we can't perceive what their engines are and that they have a It mode. could be, I can just tell you they're off. There's some mysterious pressure in the vacuum of space. What do you mean? Which we call dark energy. A mysterious pressure in the vacuum of space that is forcing the universe to accelerate in its expansion. This dark energy in the future will render the universe so large, having accelerated so significantly that all the galaxies of the night sky will have accelerated beyond our horizon. And, and all the galaxies are the source of our knowledge of cosmology, of the Big Bang. Everything we know about the history of the universe comes to us from these galaxies. If they accelerate beyond our horizon, the next generation of cosmic explorers will only have the stars of the Milky Way to think about. There would have been an entire chapter of the universe ripped from their view. And they will be trying to contemplate an understanding of the universe without a significant part of what its past was. And so I lose sleep wondering, today, was there some previous chapter ripped from the universe itself? We don't know what we don't know. And this leaves me awake at night. I lose sleep over that. <sighs> when you take Einstein's general theory of relativity, the okay. modern theory of gravity, Correct. gives us our understanding of the Big Bang right. and, and all this, all the modern cosmology, then you have quantum physics. Quantum physics is all about molecules and atoms and nuclei and mm -hmm. particles. Mm -hmm. Okay. Those two theories do not play nicely with each other in the sandbox. Okay. They each work in their own regimes, but you try to bring them together, they are inconsistent with each other. All right, so now, what happens at the beginning of the universe when the entire universe was the size of an atom? Whose rules are in charge? Whoa. All of us are pretty sure that quantum physics wins. And in so doing, quantum physics, where it pops particles in and out of existence, mm -hmm. it could pop universes in and out of existence. Was... Whole universes, if the universe is the size of a particle. Absolutely. So, the point is, Let's go back in time when the whole universe was the size of a particle. What are the rules of quantum physics telling us? They're telling us that multiple universes could be popping in and out of existence. And we are just one of them. That's it. Each one with a slightly different law of physics. Okay. So there's no limit on how many of these universes there could be. Right. Let's say there's infinite. Okay. If there's an infinite, that means there's every possible combination of all particles there ever were.